John Bird and Sanderson Haldane, the 5th of November 1892 to the 1st of December 1964, was a British Indian scientist known for his work in the study of physiology, genetics, evolutionary biology, and mathematics. He made innovative contributions to the fields of statistics and biostatistics. His article on abiogenesis in 1929 introduced the primordial soup theory and it became the foundation to build physical models for the chemical origin of life. Haldane established human gene maps for hemophilia and color blindness on the X chromosome, and codified Haldane's rule on sterility in the heterogametic sex of hybrids in species. He correctly proposed that sickle cell disease confers some immunity to malaria. He was the first to suggest the central idea of in vitro fertilization, as well as concepts such as, the hydrogen economy, cis and trans acting regulation, coupling reaction, molecular repulsion, the Darwin as a unit of evolution and organismal cloning. In 1957 he articulated Haldane's dilemma, a limit on the speed of beneficial evolution which subsequently proved incorrect. He willed his body for medical studies, as he wanted to remain useful even in death. Haldane's first paper in 1915 demonstrated genetic linkage in mammals. Subsequent works established a unification of Mendelian genetics and Darwinian evolution by natural selection whilst laying the groundwork for modern evolutionary synthesis and thus helped to create population genetics. Haldane was a professed socialist, Marxist, atheist and humanist whose political descent led him to leave England in 1956 and live in India, becoming a naturalised Indian citizen in 1961. He was the son of John Scott Haldane. Arthur C. Clarke credited him as, "...perhaps the most brilliant science populariser of his generation." Nobel laureate Peter Medawar called Haldane the cleverest man I ever knew. Biography Early life and education Haldane was born in Oxford to John Scott Haldane, a physiologist, scientist, a philosopher and a liberal, and Louisa Kathleen Trotter, a conservative. His younger sister, Naomi Mitchison, became a writer, and his uncle was Viscount Haldane and his aunt the author Elizabeth Haldane. Descended from an aristocratic and secular family of the clan Haldane, he would later claim that his Y chromosome could be traced back to Robert the Bruce. He grew up at 11 Crick Road, North Oxford. He learned to read at the age of three, and at four, after injuring his forehead he asked the doctor, Is this oxyhemoglobin or carboxyhemoglobin? From age eight he worked with his father in their home laboratory where he experienced his first self-experimentation, the method he would later be famous for. He and his father became their own human guinea pigs, such as in their investigation on the effects of poison gases. In 1899 his family moved to Charwell, a late Victorian house at the outskirts of Oxford with its own private laboratory. His formal education began in 1897 at Oxford Preparatory School, now Dragon School, where he gained a first scholarship in 1904 to Eton. In 1905 he joined Eton, where he experienced severe abuse from senior students for allegedly being arrogant. The indifference of authority left him with a lasting hatred for the English education system. However, the ordeal did not stop him from becoming captain of the school. He studied mathematics and classics at New College at the University of Oxford and obtained first-class honours in mathematical moderations in 1912 and first-class honours in greats in 1914. He became engrossed in genetics and presented a paper on gene linkage in vertebrates in the summer of 1912. His first technical paper, a 30-page long article on hemoglobin function, was published that same year, as a co-author alongside his father. Topic. Career 
His education was interrupted by the First World War during which he fought in the British Army, being commissioned a temporary second lieutenant in the 3rd Battalion of the Black Watch Royal Highland Regiment on 15 August 1914. He was promoted to temporary lieutenant on 18 February 1915 and to temporary captain on 18 October. He served in France and Iraq, where he was wounded. He relinquished his commission on 1 April 1920, retaining his rank of captain. For his ferocity and aggressiveness in battles, his commander called him the "...bravest and dirtiest officer in my army." Between 1919 and 1922 he was a fellow of New College, Oxford, where he researched physiology and genetics. He then moved to the University of Cambridge, where he accepted a readership in biochemistry and taught until 1932. From 1927 until 1937 he was also head of genetical research at the John Innes Horticultural Institution. During his nine years at Cambridge, Haldane worked on enzymes and genetics, particularly the mathematical side of genetics. He was the Fullerian Professor of Physiology at the Royal Institution from 1930 to 1932 and in 1933 he became full Professor of Genetics at University College London, where he spent most of his academic career. Four years later he became the first Weldon Professor of Biometry at University College London. In 1924, Haldane met Charlotte Franken. So that they could marry, Charlotte divorced her husband, Jack Burgers, causing some controversy. Haldane was almost dismissed from Cambridge for the way he handled his meeting with her. They married in 1926. Following their separation in 1942, the Haldanes divorced in 1945. He later married Helen Spurway. Haldane, inspired by his father, would expose himself to danger to obtain data. To test the effects of acidification of the blood he drank dilute hydrochloric acid, enclosed himself in an airtight room containing 7% carbon dioxide, and found that it gives one a rather violent headache. One experiment to study elevated levels of oxygen saturation triggered a fit which resulted in him suffering crushed vertebrae. In his decompression chamber experiments, he and his volunteers suffered perforated eardrums. But, as Haldane stated in What is Life, the drum generally heals up, and if a hole remains in it, although one is somewhat deaf, one can blow tobacco smoke out of the ear in question, which is a social accomplishment. In India In 1956, Haldane left University College London, and joined the Indian Statistical Institute in Kolkata, India, where he headed the biometry unit. Officially he stated that he left the UK because of the Suez Crisis, writing, Finally, I am going to India because I consider that recent acts of the British government have been violations of international law. He believed that the warm climate would do him good, and that India shared his socialist dreams. The university had sacked his wife Helen for excessive drinking and refusing to pay a fine, triggering Haldane's resignation. He declared he would no longer wear socks. Sixty years in socks is enough. And always dressed in Indian attire, he was keenly interested in inexpensive research. He wrote to Julian Huxley about his observations on Vanallus malabaricus, the yellow wattled lapwing. He advocated the use of Venusinensis as a model for studying plant genetics. He took an interest in the pollination of Lantana camara. He lamented that Indian universities forced those who took up biology to drop mathematics. Haldane took an interest in the study of floral symmetry. In January 1961 he befriended Gary Botting, 1960 U.S. Science Fair winner in zoology who had first visited the Haldanes along with Susan Brown, 1960 U.S. National Science Fair winner in botany, inviting him to share the results of his experiments hybridizing anthurea silk moths. 
JBS, his wife Helen Spurway, and Krishna Dronamraju were present at the Oberoi Grand Hotel in Kolkata when Brown reminded the Haldanes that she and Botting had a previously scheduled event that would prevent them from accepting an invitation to a banquet proposed by JBS and Helen in their honor and had regretfully declined the honor. After the two students had left the hotel, Haldane went on his much publicized hunger strike to protest what he regarded as a U.S. insult. When the director of the ISI, P.C. Mahalanobis, confronted Haldane about both the hunger strike and the unbudgeted banquet, Haldane resigned from his post in February 1961, and moved to a newly established biometry unit in Odisha. Haldane took Indian citizenship, he was interested in Hinduism and became a vegetarian. In 1961, Haldane described India as, "...the closest approximation to the free world." Jersey Neyman objected that, "...India has its fair share of scoundrels and a tremendous amount of poor unthinking and disgustingly subservient individuals who are not attractive." Haldane retorted, Perhaps one is freer to be a scoundrel in India than elsewhere. So one was in the USA in the days of people like Jay Gould, when in my opinion, there was more internal freedom in the USA than there is today. The disgusting subservience of the others has its limits. The people of Calcutta riot, upset trams, and refuse to obey police regulations, in a manner which would have delighted Jefferson. I don't think their activities are very efficient, but that is not the question at issue. When on 25 June 1962 he was described in print as a citizen of the world, by Groff Conklin, Haldane's response was as follows No doubt I am in some sense a citizen of the world. But I believe with Thomas Jefferson that one of the chief duties of a citizen is to be a nuisance to the government of his state. As there is no world state, I cannot do this. On the other hand, I can be, and am, a nuisance to the government of India, which has the merit of permitting a good deal of criticism, though it reacts to it rather slowly. I also happen to be proud of being a citizen of India, which is a lot more diverse than Europe, let alone the USA, the USS. R or China, and thus a better model for a possible world organization. It may of course break up, but it is a wonderful experiment. So, I want to be labeled as a citizen of India. Death. Shortly before his death from cancer, Haldane wrote a comic poem while in the hospital, mocking his own incurable disease. It was read by his friends, who appreciated the consistent irreverence with which Haldane had lived his life. The poem first appeared in print in the 21st of February 1964 issue of The New Statesman, and runs The poem ends Haldane died on 1 December 1964 in Bhubaneswar. He willed that his body be used for study at the Rangaraya Medical College, Kakanada. My body has been used for both purposes during my lifetime and after my death. Whether I continue to exist or not, I shall have no further use for it, and desire that it shall be used by others. Its refrigeration, if this is possible, should be a first charge on my estate. Topic. Academic achievements Following his father's footsteps, Haldane's first publication was on the mechanism of gaseous exchange by hemoglobin, and subsequently worked on the chemical properties of blood as a pH buffer. He investigated several aspects of kidney functions and mechanism of excretion. Enzyme kinetics In 1925, with G. E. Briggs, Haldane derived a new interpretation of the enzyme kinetics law described by Victor Henry in 1903, different from the 1913 michaelis menten equation. Leonor Michaelis and Maud Menten assumed that enzyme catalyst and substrate reactant are in fast equilibrium with their complex, which then dissociates to yield product and free enzyme. 
The Briggs Haldane equation was of the same algebraic form, but their derivation is based on the quasi steady state approximation, which is the concentration of intermediate complex or complexes does not change. As a result, the microscopic meaning of the Michaelis constant kilometer is different. Although commonly referring to it as Michaelis Menten kinetics, most of the current models typically use the Briggs Haldane derivation. Genetic linkage With his sister Naomi Mitchison, Haldane started investigating Mendelian genetics in 1908, used guinea pigs and mice, publishing reduplication in mice in 1915 the first demonstration of genetic linkage in mammals, as the paper was written during Haldane's service in the First World War, James F. Crow called it the most important science article ever written in a frontline trench. He was the first to demonstrate linkage in chickens in 1921, and with Julia Bell in humans in 1937. Topic: <laughs> Haldane's principle. In his essay on being the right size he outlines Haldane's principle, which states that the size very often defines what bodily equipment an animal must have. Insects, being so small, do not have oxygen-carrying bloodstreams. What little oxygen their cells require can be absorbed by simple diffusion of air through their bodies. But being larger means an animal must have complicated oxygen pumping and distributing systems to reach all the cells." The conceptual metaphor to animal allometry has been of use in energy economics and secession ideas. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin of life Haldane introduced the modern concept of abiogenesis in an eight-page article titled The Origin of Life in the Rationalist Annual in 1929, describing the primitive ocean as a vast chemical laboratory containing a mixture of inorganic compounds, like a hot dilute soup, in which organic compounds could have formed. Under the solar energy the anoxic atmosphere containing carbon dioxide, ammonia and water vapor gave rise to a variety of organic compounds, living or half-living things. The first molecules reacted with one another to produce more complex compounds, and ultimately the cellular components. At some point a kind of oily film was produced that enclosed self-replicating nucleic acids, thereby becoming the first cell. J. D. Bernal named the hypothesis biopoesis or biopoesis, the process of living matter spontaneously evolving from self-replicating but lifeless molecules. Haldane further hypothesized that viruses were the intermediate entities between the prebiotic soup and the first cells. He asserted that prebiotic life would have been in the virus stage for many millions of years before a suitable assemblage of elementary units was brought together in the first cell." The idea was generally dismissed as, "...wild speculation." In 1924 Alexander Oparin had suggested a similar idea in Russian, and in 1936 he introduced it to the English-speaking people. The experimental basis of the theory began in 1953 with the classic Miller-Urey experiment. Since then, the primordial soup theory became a dominant theory in the chemistry of life, and has been called the Oparin Haldane hypothesis. In 1949, Haldane proposed that genetic disorders in humans living in malaria endemic regions provided a phenotype with immunity to blood borne haemophiles. He noted that mutations expressed in red blood cells, such as sickle cell anemia and various thalassemias, were prevalent only in tropical regions where malaria has been endemic. He further observed that these were favorable traits for natural selection which protected individuals from receiving malarial infection. This concept of resistance to malaria was eventually confirmed by Anthony C. Allison in 1954. Topic. Population genetics 
He was one of the three major figures to develop the mathematical theory of population genetics, along with Ronald Fisher and Sewell Wright. He thus played an important role in the modern evolutionary synthesis of the early 20th century. He re-established natural selection as the central mechanism of evolution by explaining it as a mathematical consequence of Mendelian inheritance. He wrote a series of ten papers called A Mathematical Theory of Natural and Artificial Selection, on the numerical formalism underpinning natural selection. It showed that gene frequencies have direction and rates of change, and he pioneered the interaction of natural selection with mutation and animal migration. Paul Dane's book, The Causes of Evolution 1932, summarized these results, especially in its extensive appendix. His contributions to statistical human genetics included, the first methods using maximum likelihood for the estimation of human linkage maps, pioneering methods for estimating human mutation rates, the first estimates of mutation rate in humans, at 2 times 10 minus 5 mutations per gene per generation for the X-linked hemophilia gene, and the first notion that there is a cost of natural selection. At the John Innes Horticultural Institution, he developed the complicated linkage theory for polyploids, and extended the idea of gene-enzyme relationships with the biochemical and genetic study of plant pigments. Political views Haldane became a socialist during the First World War, supported the Second Spanish Republic during the Spanish Civil War, and then became an open supporter of the Communist Party in 1937, being a pragmatic and dialectical materialist Marxist, writing many articles for the Daily Worker. In On Being the Right Size, he wrote while nationalization of certain industries is an obvious possibility in the largest of states, I find it no easier to picture a completely socialized British Empire or United States than an elephant turning somersaults or a hippopotamus jumping a hedge. Haldane has been stated by authors including Peter Wright and Chapman Pincher to have been a Soviet spy working for GRU, with the codename Intelligentsia. In 1938, he proclaimed enthusiastically that, I think that Marxism is true. He joined the Communist Party of Great Britain in 1942. He was pressed to speak out about the rise of Lysenkoism and the persecution of geneticists in the Soviet Union as anti-Darwinist and the denouncement of genetics as incompatible with dialectical materialism. He shifted the focus to the United Kingdom and a criticism of the dependence of scientific research on financial patronage. In 1941 he wrote about the Soviet trial of his friend and fellow geneticist Nikolai Vavilov, the controversy among Soviet geneticists has been largely one between the academic scientist, represented by Vavilov and interested primarily in the collection of facts, and the man who wants results, represented by Lysenko. It has been conducted not with venom, but in a friendly spirit. Lysenko said, in the October discussions of 1939, the important thing is not to dispute, let us work in a friendly manner on a plan elaborated scientifically. Let us take up definite problems, receive assignments from the People's Commissariat of Agriculture of the USSR and fulfill them scientifically. Soviet genetics, as a whole, is a successful attempt at synthesis of these two contrasted points of view. By the end of the Second World War Haldane had become an explicit critic of the regime. He left the party in 1950, shortly after considering standing for parliament as a Communist Party candidate. He continued to admire Joseph Stalin, describing him in 1962 as, "...a very great man who did a very good job." Views <laughs> 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 Topic. Cloning of humans Haldane was the first to have thought of the genetic basis for the cloning of humans, and eventually super-talented individuals. For this he coined the term, clone, though the synonym, clon, from the Greek word clon meaning, 
twig had been used in horticulture since the 19th century. He introduced the term in his speech on biological possibilities for the human species of the next 10,000 years." at the Seba Foundation Symposium on Man and His Future in 1963. <laughs> Ectogenesis and in vitro fertilization His essay Daedalus, or, Science and the Future 1924, about ectogenesis and in vitro fertilization was an influence on Huxley's Brave New World 1932. Haldane's work was also admired by Gerald Hurd. Various essays on science were collected and published in a volume titled Possible Worlds in 1927. His book, ARP Air Raid Precautions 1938, combined his physiological research into the effects of stress upon the human body with his experience of air raids during the Spanish Civil War to provide a scientific account of the likely effects of the air raids that Britain was to endure during the Second World War. <laughs> Criticism of C.S. Lewis Along with Olaf Stapledon, Charles K. Ogden, I. A. Richards, and H. G. Wells, Haldane was accused by C. S. Lewis of scientism. Haldane criticized Lewis and his Ransom trilogy for the "...complete mischaracterization of science, and his disparagement of the human race." He wrote a book for children titled My Friend Mr. Leakey containing the stories, "...A Meal with a Magician." A Day in the Life of a Magician, Mr. Leakey's Party, Rats, The Snake with the Golden Teeth, and My Magic Collar Stud. Later editions featured illustrations by Quentin Blake. Haldane edited Gary Botting's manuscript on the genetics of giant silk moths with margin notes. Hydrogen generating windmills In 1923, in a talk given in Cambridge titled, Science and the Future, Haldane, foreseeing the exhaustion of coal for power generation in Britain, proposed a network of hydrogen generating windmills. This is the first proposal of the hydrogen based renewable energy economy. Topic: Scientists. In his an autobiography in brief, written shortly before his death in India, Haldane named four close associates as those showing promise to become illustrious scientists: T. A. Davis, K. R. Dronamraju, S. D. Jayaka, and S. K. Roy. Topic. Parodied by Aldous Huxley in the novel Antic Hay Haldane was parodied as, "...the biologist too absorbed in his experiments to notice his friends bedding his wife," by his friend Aldous Huxley in the novel Antic Hay Awards and honors Haldane was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1932. The French government conferred him its National Order of the Legion of Honour in 1937. In 1952, he received the Darwin Medal from the Royal Society. In 1956, he was awarded the Huxley Memorial Medal of the Anthropological Institute of Great Britain. He received the Feltrinelli Prize from Accademia Nazionale dei Lincei in 1961. He also received an honorary doctorate of science, an honorary fellowship at New College, and the Kimber Award of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. He was awarded the Linnean Society of London's prestigious Darwin Wallace Medal in 1958. Posthumous honours 
The Haldane Lecture at the John Innes Center, where Haldane worked from 1927 to 1937 is named in his honor. The JBS Haldane Lecture of the Genetics Society is also named in his honor. Quotations He is famous for the possibly apocryphal response that he gave when some theologians asked him what could be inferred about the mind of the Creator from the works of his creation, an inordinate fondness for beetles. This is in reference to there being over 400,000 known species of beetles in the world, and that this represents 40% of all known insect species at the time of the statement, it was over half of all known insect species. He was often quoted for saying, "...my own suspicion is that the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, but queerer than we can suppose." It seems to me immensely unlikely that mind is a mere byproduct of matter. For if my mental processes are determined wholly by the motions of atoms in my brain I have no reason to suppose that my beliefs are true. They may be sound chemically, but that does not make them sound logically. And hence I have no reason for supposing my brain to be composed of atoms. Teleology is like a mistress to a biologist, he cannot live without her but he's unwilling to be seen with her in public. I had gastritis for about 15 years until I read Lenin and other writers, who showed me what was wrong with our society and how to cure it. Since then I have needed no magnesia. I suppose the process of acceptance will pass through the usual four stages, I. This is worthless nonsense, e. This is an interesting, but perverse, point of view, e. This is true, but quite unimportant, I v. I always said so. 310 species in all of India, representing 238 genera, 62 families, 19 different orders. All of them on the ark. And this is only India, and only the birds. The stupidity of the minor shows that in birds, as in men, linguistic and practical abilities are not very highly correlated. A student who can repeat a page of a textbook may get first-class honors, but may be incapable of doing research." When asked whether he would lay down his life for his brother, Haldane, presaging Hamilton's rule, supposedly replied, two brothers or eight cousins." Topic publications Daedalus, or, Science and the Future 1924, E. P. Dutton and Company, Inc., a paper read to the Heretics, Cambridge, on 4 February 1923 Second edition 1928, London, Keegan Paul, Trench and Co., see also Haldane's Daedalus Revisited 1995, ed., with an introd, by Krishna R. Drone Amraju, foreword by Joshua Lederberg, with essays by M. F. Perutz, Freeman Dyson, Yaron Ezrahi, Ernst Meyer, Elif Axel Carlson, D. J. Wetherill, N. A. Mitchison and the editor. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19854846X A Mathematical Theory of Natural and Artificial Selection, a series of papers beginning in 1924 Briggs, G. E., Haldane, J. B. A Note on the Kinetics of Enzyme Action. Biochemical Journal. 19 to 339 DOI 10.1042 BJ0190338 PM ID 16743508 with GE Briggs Kalinicus, A Defense of Chemical Warfare 1925, E.P. Dutton Possible Worlds and Other Essays 1927, Chateau and Windus, 2001 Reprint, Transaction Publishers, ISBN 0-7658-0715-7 includes On Being the Right Size and On Being One's Own Rabbit On Being the Right Size 1929 The Origin of Life in the Rationalist Annual 1929 Animal Biology 1929 
1929 Oxford Clarendon the Sciences and Philosophy 1929 NY Doubleday Doran and Company by John Scott Haldane JBS Haldane's father Enzymes 1930 MIT Press 1965 edition with new preface by the author written just prior to his death ISBN 0-262-58003-9 Haldane JB 1931 Mathematical Darwinism, a discussion of the genetical theory of natural selection. The Eugenics Review. 23 115–117. PMC 2985031. PMID 219579. The Inequality of Man, and Other Essays 1932. The Causes of Evolution 1932, Science and Human Life 1933, Harper and Brothers, Airco, Reprint, ISBN 0-8369-2161-5 Science and the Supernatural, Correspondence with Arnold Lunn 1935, Sheed and Ward, Inc., Fact and Faith 1934, Watts Thinker's Library Human Biology and Politics 1934, A Contribution to the Theory of Price Fluctuations, The Review of Economic Studies Studies, 1-3, 186-195, 1934. My Friend Mr. Leakey, 1937, Jane Nissen Books Reprint, 2004, ISBN 978-1-903252-19-2 A Dialectical Account of Evolution in Science and Society Vol. 1, 1937, Haldane, J. B., 1937. View on Race and Eugenics, Propaganda or Science? The Eugenics Review. 28 4, 333–334. PMC 2985639. PMID 21260239. Bell, J. Haldane, J. B. The Linkage Between the Genes for Color Blindness and Hemophilia in Man. Annals of Human Genetics. 50, 1, 3 34. DOI, 10.1111, J.1469 1809.1986, TB01935, X. PMID 3322165. With Julia Bell, Haldane, J. B. Smith, C. A. 1947. A new estimate of the linkage between the genes for color blindness and hemophilia in man. Annals of Eugenics. 14, 1, 10 to 31. DOI 10.1111/j.1469 to 1809.1947. TB02374 X. PMID 18897933. With C. A. B. Smith, Air Raid Precautions, A. R. P. 1938, Victor Gollinch, Heredity and Politics, 1938, Allen and Unwin. Reply to A. P. Learners is Professor Haldane's account of evolution dialectical, in Science and Society Vol. 2 1938, The Marxist Philosophy and the Sciences 1939, Random House, Echo, Reprint, ISBN 0-8369-1137-7 Preface to Engels' Dialectics of Nature 1939, Science and Everyday Life 1940, Macmillan, 1941 Penguin, Echo. 1975 reprint, ISBN 0-405-06595-7 Lysenko and Genetics in Science and Society Vol. 4 1940. Why I Am a Materialist in Rationalist Annual 1940 The Laws of Nature in Rationalist Annual 1940 Science in Peace and War 1941 Lawrence and Wishart Limited New Paths in Genetics 1941 George Allen and Unwin Heredity and Politics 1943 George Allen and Unwin Why Professional Workers Should Be Communists 1945 London Communist Party of Great Britain In this four-page pamphlet Haldane contends that Communism should appeal to professionals because Marxism is based on the scientific method and communists hold scientists as important. Haldane subsequently disavowed this position. 
Adventures of a Biologist 1947, Science Advances 1947, Macmillan What is Life 1947, Bonnie and Gaia 1949 edition, Lindsay Drummond Everything Has a History 1951, Allen and Unwin includes Old Horny FRS CS Lewis's reply to Professor Haldane is available in On Stories and Other Essays on Literature ed Walter Hooper 1982, ISBN 0-15-602768-2. The Origins of Life, New Biology, 16, 12-27 1954. Suggests that an alternative biochemistry could be based on liquid ammonia. The Biochemistry of Genetics 1954, Haldane, J. B. 1955. Origin of Man. Nature. 176 4473 169 to 170 Bibcode 1955nature.176 169h DOI 10.1038/176169a0 PMID 13244650 Hall Dane, JBS The Cost of Natural Selection. Journal of Genetics. 55 511–524. DOI, 10.1007, BF029840069. Hall Dane, JB Natural Selection in Man. Acta Genetica A Statistica Medica. 6, 3, 321 to 332. PMID 13,434,715. Little, Little Science, Big Science, 1961. Cancer's a funny thing. In New Statesman, the 21st of February 1964. Topic. See also. Experiments in the Revival of Organisms, a 1940 Soviet film featuring Haldane in the introduction. List of independent discoveries. Primordial soup. Theory of the evolution of life from carbon-based molecules, c. 1924. Precambrian rabbit. Timeline of hydrogen technologies. <laughs>